Kate walked slowly down the street, lost in her thoughts. Oblivious to the bustling crowd nearby. Her grief weighed heavy on her. Making it difficult to find a single reason to come to terms with what had happened. And summon the strength to move on. Kate's mental turmoil had been triggered by her mother's passing. Just two weeks earlier. Her mother had battled a serious illness for several months. But it wasn't only the pain of losing her that troubled the young woman. Kate, with her striking blue eyes and long brown hair, had recently received a peculiar letter from a lawyer. Inside the envelope were elaborate instructions and a key to a safety deposit box. That supposedly held her mother's savings, as detailed in her will. Kate's amazement knew no bounds. Savings? What savings? Kate pondered aloud, her voice barely above a whisper. We barely had enough money to put food on the table. There were weeks when we survived on nothing but stale cornmeal cakes. Kate continued her slow journey toward the bank. Her thoughts consumed by the revelation. Her mother, Penelope Wilson, had raised her single-handedly. And as a loving and caring mother. She had always tried to provide for her daughter's needs. Kate had never known anything about her father. As Penelope had kept that part of her life a closely guarded secret, offering only evasive responses to Kate's inquiries. Penelope had lived a modest life, seldom socializing with anyone beyond what was necessary for her work. For the last decade, she had worked as a cleaning lady at a roadside motel, frequented mostly by bikers and truckers. Money had always been scarce in their household, forcing Penelope and her daughter to pinch pennies at every turn. Now, the discovery of the safety deposit box added a layer of complexity to Kate's understanding of her mother's life. As Kate approached the bank, her mind raced with questions. Why had her mother kept this secret? What could be so important? That it required such a highly secure facility for safekeeping? The situation struck her as absurd, years of poverty. Struggling to make ends meet, and now the revelation of hidden wealth. All her life, Kate had trusted her mother implicitly believing there were no secrets between them. However, this strange letter had shattered that belief, revealing a hidden chapter of her mother's life. Penelope Wilson had always been a secretive woman, avoiding new acquaintances and never inviting anyone into their home. Now, Kate began to fathom the reasons behind her mother's guarded nature. Lost in her anxious thoughts, Kate reached the bank on Main Street. As she entered, she was met by a security guard, Simon, who politely inquired about her purpose. Good afternoon. I'd like to access my safety deposit box. Kate replied, her voice steady. Simon, relatively new to the job, was not as hardened as some of the other security guards. He had recently left the Marine Corps due to an injury and had transitioned to civilian life with difficulty. The bank's owner had recognized the value of hiring individuals with military backgrounds as security guards. And Simon was grateful for the opportunity. Simon, well versed in the bank's protocols, promptly escorted Kate to the bank manager's office. Donovan Green, the bank manager, was taken aback by the sight of such an unconventional visitor. Most safety deposit box renters exuded an air of affluence. But Kate, with her appearance, contradicted that expectation. Donovan maintained his professionalism and extended a courteous welcome. Hello. I understand you wish to access safety deposit box number 245. Which your mother rented several years ago. Kate nodded. Yes, that's correct. My mother was Penelope Wilson. She couldn't be here in person because, unfortunately, she passed away two weeks ago. Donovan's expression darkened slightly. He disliked situations involving safety deposit boxes. That had been rented out years ago, well before his tenure at the bank. This meant he didn't have first-hand knowledge of the box's contents. Or the client who had opened it. 
as Donovan sat at his desk and accessed the bank's records. He confirmed the information. Penelope Wilson, yes, I see it here, Donovan said with a sigh. And you have the key and a letter from the lawyer citing your mother's will. Kate nodded again, her gaze steady. Donovan's discomfort persisted as he prepared to address the matter. He preferred situations where he was in complete control and well-informed. And this safety deposit box presented a unique challenge. Donovan Green had a tight grip on the bank's employees. Having amassed compromising information about each of them. And employing various means of influence. Few knew of Donovan's deep passion for slot machines. Which consumed his weekends in Nevada as he indulged in gambling. Often losing substantial sums of money. Faced with financial challenges, Donovan resorted to a scam to keep himself afloat. His scheme involved manipulating customers by inflating their interest rates. And pocketing the difference between the actual rate. And what the customers were paying. The bank's owner remained blissfully ignorant of Donovan's activities. Firmly believing him to be a responsible and trustworthy employee. Furthermore. The owner was convinced that safety deposit box number 245 contained something immensely valuable due to its substantial insurance coverage. The bank manager proposed, well, let's go to the vault, miss. You can open your safety deposit box there. Kate's surprise was evident on her face. She had expected the manager to retrieve the box's contents and have her sign some paperwork. Nevertheless, Donovan led Kate into the vault, pointing her to the designated safety deposit box. According to the bank's standard procedure, Donovan was to leave the room and return only after the client had collected their deposit. However, he sensed that Kate might not be familiar with the protocol and chose to remain in the room, intending to catch a glimpse of what was inside box number 245. With bated breath, Kate inserted the key and turned it twice. The familiar clicking sound signaling her success. When she opened the box, a gasp of astonishment escaped her lips. Dear God, where did all this come from? She exclaimed. Donovan, unable to resist his curiosity, craned his neck to peer over Kate's shoulder. His face resembled that of a heron or giraffe attempting to catch a glimpse of the treasure-filled box. It was overflowing with a dazzling array of jewelry, including gold brooches, rings, and bracelets. Overwhelmed, Kate felt as though she had stumbled upon Aladdin's cave, with the countless treasures of Arabian sheiks spread before her. Donovan, unable to conceal his envy, remarked, Looks like you've inherited quite a fortune from your mother. Kate's discomfort was palpable, and her cheeks flushed crimson. She had not anticipated discovering such wealth. After carefully placing the jewelry into a paper bag provided by Donovan, she noticed a note at the bottom of the box. She decided to read it at home. Meanwhile, Donovan's scheming mind was already devising another plan. He had no intention of letting Kate leave with the valuable contents so easily. He needed her home address to pass on to his associates in a criminal gang. He had been part of for years. Wait a second, miss, Donovan began with a sly smile. I'm concerned about your safety. Carrying such valuable items on the street can be risky. I'd like to have one of my guards escorts you home. You met him at the door earlier. He'll ensure you and your valuables reach home safely. Kate, still reeling from her unexpected windfall, readily accepted the manager's offer. As she left the vault, Donovan called in on Simon, the security guard, and gave him specific instructions. Listen carefully, Donovan told Simon. You will escort her home, remember her address and her house's layout, and find a way to inquire if she has a dog or an alarm system. Simon found the manager's request highly unusual and approached it with caution. Sir, may I ask why you need to know the layout of her home? Donovan's response was curt and intimidating. That's none of your business. This isn't the Marine Corps. 
I'm the one giving order here. You do as I say and keep your mouth shut. Simon's instincts told him that Donovan's intentions were dubious. Having seen his fair share of troubling situations during his time in the Marine Corps, he had developed a keen sense for when something was awry. Simon, true to his professional ethics, refrained from discussing his concerns with Kate, but did accompany her home as promised. Upon reaching her house, instead of studying the layout of her home as instructed by Donovan, Simon halted at the doorstep and, with lowered eyes, whispered a cautious warning to Kate. Be careful today, miss, Simon urged, his voice barely above a whisper. Better yet, hide the jewelry somewhere else. I can't tell you more. But I have a feeling you might be at risk of getting robbed today. Robbed? But nobody even knows about the inheritance. Who would rob me? Kate responded in disbelief. Simon couldn't provide any concrete answers as he didn't possess all the details. Unlike many security guards, he took his job extremely seriously and always maintained vigilance. Even beyond the bank's premises, his keen attention had repeatedly drawn his focus to Donovan and some suspicious individuals who seemed to be associated with a gang. However, he refrained from divulging these observations to Kate as she was already overwhelmed by his warning. After bidding Kate farewell, Simon returned to the bank. Yet, when he attempted to explain to Donovan that he hadn't had a chance to enter Kate's house, the bank manager erupted in anger. Why am I even paying you? You're not doing your job properly, and you're refusing to follow direct orders. Donovan yelled in frustration. Simon calmly defended himself, stating, Excuse me, sir, but what you asked of me had nothing to do with bank security. Tired of the argument, Donovan dismissed Simon from his office. In reality, he had already made up his mind regarding Kate's fate. That night, he intended to send people to her house to rob her and seize the jewelry. Meanwhile, in another part of the city, Kate was engrossed in examining the jewelry. She suddenly remembered the note tucked away at the bottom of the paper bag. Unfolding the aged piece of paper, she found just a few sentences written by her late mother. The paper bore the address where Kate was to take her inheritance. An address in another town. Why would mom want me to go there? Kate wondered aloud, baffled by this newfound mystery. She became so absorbed in her thoughts that she failed to notice when nightfall descended. Naively, she disregarded the warning from the security guard, convinced that nobody would dare to rob her. On the very day she had visited the bank, unbeknownst to Kate, an inconspicuous car had parked in front of her house. And within minutes, three burly men emerged from the dusty vehicle. They donned masks with slits for their eyes, brandishing batons and knives. It was uncertain how this situation would have unfolded if it weren't for Simon who had been observing Kate's house from nearby bushes. Ever since he finished work, Simon, a former Marine, was unafraid of masks or weapons. He remained vigilant, ready to intervene and protect Kate should the need arise. Simon sprang into action, using all of his well-honed military training to confront the robbers. The criminals, caught off guard by the unexpected resistance, hadn't anticipated battling someone as capable and strong as Simon. While robbing a defenseless young woman was one thing, engaging in combat with a seasoned military veteran was an entirely different challenge. Simon's shouts for help had drawn the attention of neighbors, who began pouring out of their homes to investigate the commotion, seeing themselves outnumbered and outmatched. The robbers quickly realized their advantage was slipping away. In a hasty retreat, they fled the scene. However, Simon had paid a physical toll during the altercation. Though he had prevailed, he bore the injuries of the encounter. One of the vigilant neighbors immediately dialed an ambulance and alerted the police. Kate, slowly comprehending the gravity of the situation, hugged Simon, tears of gratitude welling up in her eyes. 
she apologized profusely for not heeding his warning. Stop it, this is none of your fault, Simon reassured her weakly. I'm just glad everything worked out fine. Simon's condition allowed him to remain conscious when the police arrived. Enabling him to provide a testimony. That would set the authorities on the trail of the robbers. The very next day. Donovan Green was arrested and charged with orchestrating a criminal gang. Following medical treatment. Simon's condition improved considerably, and he regained his strength. Kate wasted no time in visiting the address her late mother had indicated in the note. She soon located the place, a gated suburban community with grand mansions. Clutching her mother's note, Kate rang the doorbell. Uncertain how to explain her visit. She decided to play it by ear and see how events unfolded. The door was answered by a welcoming woman in her sixties. Whose face seemed vaguely familiar to Kate. Kate furrowed her brow. Trying to recollect where she might have seen the woman before. Still pondering this, Kate handed the woman her late mother's note. The woman, adjusting her glasses, quickly perused the note. Her face lit up, and her eyes sparkled with recognition. Come inside, please. My husband will be delighted to meet you, the woman said. Wearing a mysterious smile, perplexed and increasingly curious, Kate followed the woman inside the mansion. As Kate would soon discover. The residence belonged to a wealthy elderly couple, Amanda and David Torres. They were landowners. And their entire fortune was built on land and related investments. Seated at the table, Mrs. Torres poured tea for Kate. And then she exchanged a meaningful glance with her husband. Dear Lord, she looks so much like Penelope. David Torres couldn't help but exclaim. Kate's eyes filled with genuine bewilderment. Penelope. Did you know my mother? She asked. Amanda and David exchanged glances once more. And began to share their incredible story. Over two decades ago, their daughter Penelope Torres had run away from home. Taking with her a portion of the family's centuries-old heirlooms. Her departure had been driven by a passionate and tumultuous love. Affair with a construction worker, a love that had incurred her parents' disapproval. The intensity of her relationship with the young man had driven Penelope to make a life-changing decision. To flee her family home and start anew in a neighboring town with her lover. Penelope had later regretted her choice, but it was too late to reverse her actions. Her beloved turned out to be an irresponsible alcoholic. Who offered little but empty promises of love. Complicating matters further, Penelope had become pregnant. Yet, unable to reconcile with her family or confess her mistake. She had opted to change her last name, raising her child on her own. Penelope's life had been marked by hardships. But even during her most challenging times. She had never considered parting with the family heirlooms. Eventually. She had decided to secure them in a safety deposit box to ensure their safety. Kate was moved to tears by the revelation. For years, she had believed her mother to be an orphan. Unaware that her mother had parents who were millionaires. Embracing her granddaughter, Mrs. Torres felt needed and loved once more. Kate, now aware of her heritage, returned the family heirlooms. Which had brought her to her long-lost grandparents. Her unexpected discovery of family. Also led her to ponder the fate of the security guard. Simon. Who had bravely thwarted a criminal plot and helped dismantle a dangerous gang. Rumors circulated that Simon and Kate, bound by their shared experience. Remained in touch and even started dating. Their future was uncertain. But one thing was certain. They would always have a deep respect and appreciation for each other. The female teacher had grown weary of sending messages to the student's mother. As a result, she became frustrated. Raised her voice at him, and issued a stern ultimatum. She threatened that unless he showed up at school the following day. With his mother in tow, she would have no choice but to expel him from the class. Michael, the young boy, ran to the cemetery in tears, filled with resentment. 
he had been enduring bullying from his classmates. Due to his disheveled appearance, arriving at school in dirty, torn pants. At just eight years old, he tried to wash his clothes but lacked soap. Washing powder, and even water at home. His life had taken a grim turn. And questions about his mother's whereabouts loomed large. The boy's mother, Maria, had faced her share of hardships. Orphaned at the age of 17, she had ventured alone to the city. Struggling to make ends meet. She took on various small part-time jobs. Often sleeping on the streets and enduring hunger. Then, fate intervened when a compassionate woman named Nicole. Noticed her by the roadside. Upon learning Maria's tragic story, Nicole sympathized deeply and offered her a job in her spacious home. Maria was granted a small basement room, and she began working diligently. Nicole, who had once experienced poverty herself, found that she had made the right choice in hiring Maria. The young woman was exceptionally tidy and an excellent cook. In the house where Nicole and her husband resided, their sons were grown and had moved away. Nicole's eldest son had his own family in another city. While the youngest was studying abroad. For almost two years, everything was harmonious. And Nicole even offered to help Maria buy a small house. Allowing her to make payments from her salary. Maria happily accepted, and a year and a half later, she moved into her new home. Although house payments accounted for 80% of her income, Maria was content. She had a job that provided meals and laundry facilities. And with her limited income, she managed to save some money. However, the tranquility was disrupted when Nicole's son, Jack, returned home. Jack was captivated by Maria's extraordinary beauty. But harbored less than honorable intentions. He was engaged to the daughter of an influential deputy and pursued Maria secretly. Only seeking amusement. Despite Maria's youthful infatuation with Jack. He had no genuine interest in her. Three months passed, and Maria found herself pregnant. While Jack proceeded with his wedding plans. Maria confessed her predicament to Nicole. Who promised to help but firmly stated. That her son would marry the deputy's daughter, not Maria. Feeling dejected and miserable. Maria's situation worsened when one night, a drunken Jack invaded her home. He demanded that she forget him and not interfere with his life. In a fit of rage. He instructed Maria to sell her house as quickly as possible and relocate elsewhere. Warning that he would employ unsavory tactics to hinder her if she refused. You've already benefited enough from our family, the enraged man spat. Return to your village. Maria sold her house and relocated to another city. Nicole tried to locate Maria but couldn't find her. Five months into her pregnancy, Maria started a small vegetable stall. Which proved successful. She lived alone, without assistance during a difficult childbirth. But she found happiness in her healthy newborn son. As Maria worked, her friend and neighbor Karen cared for the baby. When he turned one, Maria started bringing him to work and employed Karen at her vegetable stall. Ensuring the boy was well cared for. Karen's fiancé, who worked at a local bank, advised Maria to open a savings account for her son's future, which she embraced. Maria diligently saved money and trusting it to Karen's fiancé to deposit it into his son's account. At the age of six, Michael began attending an expensive private school. Although other parents objected to Maria's merchant status, a kind teacher recognized Maria's dedication, and ensured Michael received a tuition discount. Maria continued saving for her son's future. But six months later, she fell seriously ill. Karen's fiancé convinced Maria to sign a power of attorney to manage her affairs. Ostensibly to help her. Tragically, Maria passed away, and the cause of her illness remained a mystery. Karen told Michael that his mother was resting. And would be taken to a peaceful place. A week later, Michael woke up alone, with Karen gone. She had left a note. 
assuring him she would return in a month. And warning him not to reveal his living situation. To avoid being sent to an orphanage, as weeks passed with no sign of Karen. Michael faced challenges, often arriving late to school. His teacher noticed his untidy appearance and sent a note to his mother. Unaware of his dire circumstances, the teacher continued to write notes. Growing frustrated with Maria's lack of response. Michael, living without electricity or water due to unpaid bills, fetched water from neighboring gardens and scavenged for food. When it was time for a school exhibition, Michael couldn't afford the materials for his project. The teacher scolded him in front of everyone and led him out of the classroom, threatening not to allow him back unless his hygiene improved. Depressed, Michael ran to the cemetery, shouting to his mother, but a caretaker called the police. Learning of the incident, his teacher visited Michael, asking for his forgiveness. As she realized his mother would never return. Journalists picked up Michael's story, leading to a police investigation. Karen and her fiancé were accused of stealing Maria's assets, poisoning her deliberately, and received severe sentences. Michael's teacher decided to adopt him, providing the love and care he lacked after his mother's death. Nicole, an elderly woman who saw Michael's story, believed he was her grandson. Due to his resemblance to her own son and visited him, Michael continued to live with his foster mother, while his grandmother ensured his future was secure. His father, Jack, remained distant. But Nicole was determined to provide a different life for Michael. Despite her disappointment in her own son,